is a powerhouse vocalist, musical director, and celebrated voice teacher. She is a natural healer and is currently changing lives and voices all over the Denver area. Lighthouse Conversations welcomes Tracy Kern. Welcome, Tracy. <laughs> it is my absolute delight to introduce you to Tracy Kern. If you don't know her, you better know her. She and I met doing theater, gosh, over 10 years yeah. ago, 12 years ago. 12 years ago. And I was just blown away by her absolute talent, her gifts, her beautiful soul. And I took voice lessons with her too. Mm -hmm. And I quickly learned that not only was my voice getting lessened, so was my soul. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Tracy is a very powerful energy healer and she brings that into her lessons, into her mm -hmm. performance. So um, Tracy, have you always been like so connected? And if, if not, I want to hear how that happened. Um, I always knew something was bigger than me. I knew there was a connection somewhere um, growing up, um, but I didn't know what it was. And so growing up in the Midwest, uh, your connection to that is, is church and Christianity and that sort of thing. So that's where I dove into, but it never felt quite right. Um, and so I kind of hunted and found and made my way into where I am now by finding different teachers and reading different books and, um, you know, so. I hear that um, when I speak to different people about their awakening processes. When I was a kid, I knew something was different. I knew right. that there was, hi puppies, we've got some puppies in the background who are also very connected, yes. hi, very spiritual mm -hmm. puppies. Um, always knowing that there was something different. and. I'm curious about the trajectory of your life when you got to that point where you were awake and I know it doesn't happen all at once sometimes it's little bits and pieces um, I'm just curious about like that moment where all those pieces came together and you're like I'm a different person than I thought I was like, can you talk a little bit about that sure um, so when I the biggest thing happened when I moved to New York City I I sold everything packed my car and drove to New York City without a plan and I tell people I had to move to a city of what, 15 million people to find myself? Yeah. Um, right? <laughs> so um, my best friend lived there and we had talked about there was something more out there. There was a different, you know, a connection to a source that was bigger than us. Um, but I didn't, my, my narrow minded fear based, mm. you know, whatever. Um, kept me from really opening up to that and um, one of my first days that I was there I went to Barnes & Noble because that's what you do when you get sad and lonely in New York because yes. you go to Target or you go to Barnes & Noble. Was it Union Station? Or Union Square? It was Union Square. Union Square. And um, I was drawn to the self-help section and to the book Conversations with God mm -hmm. by Neil Donald Walsh and I sat I grabbed it off the shelf and I sat there and I read it cover to cover the entire day I didn't move and I sat and read that book cover to cover and I had never felt something that felt so much like home or f truth than that and that was my first big moment of like oh oh okay you're literally speaking my language now this I get, this I understand. And then um, and I started talking to Kelly about it and then, and he, you know, he was into tarot. Yeah. And he came home one day and handed me a gift and it was a tarot deck. Mm -hmm. And that first initial, you know, because of the association yes. growing up, the, it's the devil, it's evil, it's whatever. The weird thing for me was, it was like old home. It, there was no negative attachment to it. It just helped me sort the things I was seeing or feeling or hearing. It gave a, a, a picture. It was like watching a movie when I would lay the cards out. I'm like, oh, this and this and this and this. Like I didn't, I didn't have to really think hard about it. Because it, it's a tool, it's a connection. It was a connection, right. It was, a, it was an amazing tool for me to help understand because I had no other tools at that point in time. I didn't have 
so that I would say that was that sort of experience was what set me on the path that mm -hmm. I'm on now um, over the years there were several more like reading more books and different authors and things like that and then um, you know growing up watching um, John Edwards yes on, or John Edward on John TV Edward. and um, watching <laughs> James and Prague and yes. watching what they did and and um, feeling connected in that way and reading their books and and being like okay I'm not crazy like there there is a whole network of people that feel and speak and believe what I believe um, that's always the best connection right? point when you realize I'm not alone, I'm not in alone. This. and sometimes you have wonderful friends that you get to talk to about this but if you come from a community where this isn't something that's talked about mm -hmm. or researched much it mm -hmm. can feel very isolating and loneliness oh. definitely is a part of the awakening process I've come to realize absolutely you mm -hmm. do you start to feel because you start to feel alone because the people that you are with don't often get it and so you have to pull back from that and you have to go internal and you have to get a little selfish mm -hmm. before you can step out and I would say that's highly unselfish when you think about it, mm. because when you are taking that time for yourself to integrate everything and to kind of figure out what's going on, you're not throwing it at other people. No. You're not saying, what's going on? Fix me. Um, I'm, I'm emotional and I want you to just have it and take it for me. Um, and your puppies totally agree. And they're right? like, here, take it. <laughs> I want you to have it. Um, and it's having this, mm, this, this knowingness that it, it will pass too and I've learned to love the alone time as oh. well I spend way more alone time than I ever have before. oh it's so good it's so healing to be in your space to be in your own energy to be in that place you can't heal without internalizing and, and going inside that's an excellent point and knowing what it feels like to be in your own space versus letting everyone else in because you'd mm -hmm. like to heal their problems or you know trying to be what everyone else is because they're they fit in and they're accepted mm -hmm. versus like I'm this kind of strange person over here who's not quite fitting right. in because my vibe is so over there right, right. yeah yeah and, and when we take that from other people and we're like oh I'll help you with that I'll help you yeah. we actually do them a disservice right. they need that to heal it's their growing you know, process it's like and I I don't want to give you my stuff because I need that to heal I have to sit with my stuff and look at my stuff and let it move through to release it and to heal from it. The only way out is through. Exactly. <laughs> oh my gosh. All the way. So in the past couple of years, you've gone through an even greater transformation. Can you tell me a little bit about the physical changes that have happened, the changes in, you know, even bringing other people into your life? Like how has everything shifted and why did that happen? Okay. So... What she's referring to is, is I've lost a very significant amount of weight. Um, and I, I've always struggled with my weight my entire life. And that came from a place of protection. Um, when you have trauma, go through emotional things or whatever, you find a way to protect yourself. And you know, for some people it's drugs, for some people it's alcohol, for some people it's sex, some people. So for me it was food. And I, you know, food was my drug of choice. Um, it, you know, it was my best friend and my worst enemy, you know, uh, it made me feel amazing and it made me feel like crap all in one thing. And the result then was creating more space around me to feel safe, you know, by expanding my physical space, people couldn't come in and hurt me or take from me because, you know, when you see a larger person, you have a different view on them, mm -hmm. you know? And so for me, it was a way to keep myself safe and to keep people out. Um, and it worked. And it worked. It worked quite well. And I, I also felt it was easier for me to give away that way. So I would give and give and give and give and then fill myself up with food and, and expand myself and then give and give and give and give until I was empty, fill myself back up with food expand myself some more because it felt like that was the only way I felt I felt solid I felt safe that way I felt I felt I existed with the largeness of me yes yes physically makes sense and so um, 
then when you realize, oh, I don't actually have to do that. I can I have other tools to keep myself safe. I'm in charge. I'm in control. I'm, um, you know, you, you figure that out that you're like, wait, but this isn't the life I came here to live. I didn't come here to live in that physical space because it's not, that's not the experience I want to have. And that is your soul poking you like, listen to me. No, really listen to me. Right. When you're going to listen to right. me. And, and it gets obnoxiously loud sometimes. Sure does. It says, if you're not going to make a choice to do it, I will find a I way to I will find a way you. to beat you senseless <laughs> to have it. Um, so started that journey and it's been a two year process. And, um, so physically I'm, I'm a completely, literally completely different person. So what was that moment when you just said, this is the I've day? I've had enough. Um, <laughs> I, I woke up, I have this, this magical little nephew who is yeah. like my world. And, um, I didn't want to be that aunt who couldn't play with him. I wanted to be around and I wanted to experience amazing things with him and to, um, and it wasn't for him, but it was, I knew the experience was with him. I wasn't having the experience I wanted. That makes sense. Um, and, and then other things like I wanted to travel and, and being large makes traveling very difficult. And, um, I wasn't, I wanted to connect with people like, because I was finally feeling safe. But you, I wasn't finding the connection that I wanted because of the physical limitations of my body at that time. And so it was like, no, 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 enough, enough. This is not, again, this is not the life I came here to live. I came here to live a large life, not largely body-wise in my life. So it's a shift in perception of mm -hmm. what it meant mm -hmm. to actually live that large life right. and a variety of choices you had to make that completely shifted your day-to-day -day routine, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and also knowing I'm in charge of this. Mm -hmm. I'm in charge. I, I'm the one manifesting all of this. And so becoming clear and intentional about what type of life I wanted made everything else fall into place and feel safe without having to physically do it because I could do it on an energetic level which was much more powerful and much more um, oh my gosh words effective that's the word yeah. it was much more effective thank you um, it was much more effective because people don't they may not know it but they respond to energy way they faster sure than they respond to physicalness they just don't know most oh yeah, I, I know within a few seconds, like I can read someone's energy so quickly and it makes mm -hmm. you want to be around them and be like, mm -hmm. cool, I'm going to, I'm going to just back I'll be over here to here. Yeah. 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 Be the, be the first person. Right? The, the yeah. energy Let wants to in. drop. Yes. Totally. <laughs> um, what were the biggest resistance, uh, resistance and challenges that you faced as you made this decision? Cause you, this isn't a one-time thing. Like you have to make this oh, every day. Every day. I don't live a day. every day, every minute. It's a choice. It's a choice to, to choose differently, to be like, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not going to do it the way I've always done it. Yeah. It has to be, it has to be an intentional choice every day. And to, to take control of the thoughts and the patterns that are, you know, so, ingrained. are so ingrained in mm -hmm. us from a little kid, you know, again, growing up in the Midwest, food was our friend. Right. And, and I, you know, I grew up in Iowa, so you know, I don't know what it is around here, but, um, you know, food was essential to, oh my gosh, a baby's born food. Oh my gosh. Someone died food. Oh my gosh. You just mm -hmm. did the most amazing. You just won an award. Let's go get ice cream. Celebration. Like, celebration yeah. was always food. Yeah. And so, or, you know, oh, you just got your heart broken. Let's go eat 600 cookies, you know, or whatever. So that pattern is so ingrained in the body. It's not in the soul, but it's in the body. And, you know, so that finding, sometimes I'll have that reaction and, and I'll, I'll go to do what I've always done. Mm -hmm. And I have to, you have to, I have to choose in that moment. Wait, is this the life I want to live? Or is that the life I want to live? And there are consequences to every action. I'm not a victim in this. I am choosing 
that, and you choose your heart, it's hard to stay where you were and it's hard to do something oh. new. So where oh. do you want to end up is the Change question. is scary, but change is the only way to make the life that you want. And it's so powerful. It has such a hold on you because you've mm -hmm. operated like this for so long. For so long. Do you have any resources or tools you'd like to share that maybe helped you in the process? It could be books. It could be uh, um, practices. Well, I, we've talked about I keto is keto was something that I really connected to um, because the food is amazing and um, and it made sense and my body likes that and you know I love cheese I love so cheese. Oh, so much cheese is so good mm -hmm. um, so for me finding that really helped um, and I I liked how I felt on it you know and it worked well for me. And from a mental or spiritual perspective? Who girl. Um, <laughs> living, I know, they're like, well, let us tell too. you. Um, living intentionally in gratitude became what really changed it for me. And knowing I'm doing this. No one's doing this to me. I'm doing this to myself. Take full responsibility. Taking every responsibility. You know, I'm not a victim of whatever I've been through or whatever has someone did to me or whatever. I am choosing how to use that. Do I use that to make myself better or do I use that to make myself stuck? And and I I want to vibrate at a higher place and live a higher life than that. And so for me, it really started off with finding joy and gratitude mm, in good. every moment like joy is my big word like it's all about if I'm not if it's not bringing me joy then it's got to go and there's a difference between temporary satisfaction and joy because you look at that that food and you say I would love to just fill my belly right. with that way that's gonna feel great and then as soon as you're done you're like why am I doing right and there are times though that I'm like okay will this bring me joy and if so, and if so, then have it. it. And but you can't attach anything else to it. Mm -hmm. That's the secret. That's the secret part of it. Is oh, okay. So if I eat this, will I will I beat myself up for it later, or will I just live in the joy of this? There are times yeah. when I think that I want it and it's going to bring me joy, and then as I'm doing it, it feels like I'm punishing myself, mm -hmm. and, and I keep doing it, and I'm mm -hmm. like, I should finish it because I started it, and then I realize like, what was that experience? It right. was not worth it. No. Make it no. worth it. Enjoy that piece of cake. And you're like, right. oh, yes. Mm -hmm. I want this more than anything. Yeah, and then leave it. Leave it be. Don't attach anything else to it. Did it's you all about the intention. The intention is so right, and it's also erasing certain patterns like, you better clear your plate. There are people starving <gasps> oh. somewhere, right? Oh. Yeah. That is a, a big biggie. thing. That mm -hmm. is such a big thing. And it's okay to leave food on your plate. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I've had to learn that too because I've, I've, I have a lot of these patterns as well. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, I find it super helpful what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Whew, there's so much good stuff. So right. you, you're a great reader. You mm -hmm. um, you mm -hmm. follow a lot of wonderful teachers that have yeah. helped you along your way. Very much. You mentioned Abraham. You mentioned oh. James Vine in Prague. Um, tell me a little bit more. Um, so yeah. So uh, let's see. Um, I love like the Abraham Hicks um, Ask and It Is Given. That for me just made such perfect sense. It was like, oh, really? It's it is that simple. It is that simple. I'm creating this. If I don't like what's happening, change the channel. Mm -hmm. Create something different. You know. Um, so for me, finding reading and finding Abraham Hicks was really taking it to the next level. And then, um, yeah, we can talk about, like, the. I went to a workshop with James Van Prague, and um, my intention was, I, I went into it and I was like, he will bring me up on stage. I, I will meet this man who's been a mentor to me for my entire life. Um, I will get up on stage with him. I will have face-to-face -face with him. And we were do he was doing an exercise, and he looked through the audience. He's like, I need somebody. And we locked eyes, and he's like, hey, it's supposed to be you. And I was like, it is. And so <laughs> so I got up on stage with him, and he was um, he was showing people how where your chakras are and, like, how to read energy and how to, you know, feel and sense energy. And um, he's, you know, kind of going through, and he went to where my third eye, uh -huh. where your third eye is, and he he pulled back and he goes, 
he looks at the audience and he goes, she's the real deal. And I kind of smiled and he goes, you know you're the real deal. And I was like, yeah. And he said, um, he looked at the audience and he goes, do you know why? Because when I went near her third eye, it about blew me through the wall. <laughs> he so goes, I had to hold on because her power about blew me away. Um, and so that, you know, not that we need validation. And you and I have talked about that in lessons and things. And um, But having someone that you've admired acknowledge, you know, it's not a validation like, oh, please validate me. But to be like, no, no, I see you. I see who you are, I see what you are, I see your gifts and what you have to offer, boy, that feels really lovely. And it's a wonderful check in, like, you're on the right, right. path, you're like on, you hit this landmark. Right. And so you know, I'm gonna keep going because I have the support behind me as well, mm -hmm. so it just helps you mm -hmm. with what you're doing instead of yeah. saying, well, you have permission to do it because I see it in you. Right. There's a big difference, mm -hmm. and so when you have that empowerment, you can say thank you for that, and yes. I'm gonna keep going because I know in my heart right. that it's the right thing. Yeah. Wow, um, yeah. that's, so that that's was, incredible. That was really, really just the most amazing gift that I and the universe gave mm -hmm. to myself yes, with yes. that moment of like, no, 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 you got this, you got this. Girl. Yeah, it was amazing. And it's like you have to be open to receiving that uh, and believing that it's a possibility. Oh my gosh, the universe sends you all the time. We're getting, we're getting messages of you're on the right path or you're not on the right path. Or, and if we, if we just stay open and receptive to it, mm -hmm. you can't go wrong. Like there is no right or wrong, but you can't, you can't not live the most amazing, intentional, beautiful, incredible life. You know, it's so funny you say that. I've started, my, my messages are, if I'm thinking a word in my head, and then I, as of the second I'm thinking it, I either see it in print, or I hear it in a song at the exact moment mm -hmm. I'm thinking it, and it could be like a, a word that you don't normally think about. Right. For me, those are like little check marks, little mm -hmm. cues, like keep going, girl, you're on the right yes. track. You're, and I was just saying, thank you. Or I was just like, walk in the store and I imagine a word and I look up and it's on that poster on the wall. I'm like, I see you. And I think the universe likes it when you acknowledge it and oh, you just say, thank you. They do because the universe, it, it's there to help. You know, source, universe, whatever you want to call it, is there to help. And so when you acknowledge it, it's like, okay, you want some more? Oh, you want some more? Here you go, here's some more. You know, do you mind if I read the um, oracle card out loud that you pulled? Before Please do. Speaking? Okay. Yeah. So yeah, um, purple is my color, and I just I had set turquoise as the intention for this um, for the, setting the space for this interview. So we have a turquoise and purple card that came up, <laughs> and we were chatting before this, and this card came up, and it was so appropriate. I just want to read the message, and maybe um, it will resonate with you as yeah. well. The law of attraction assembles all cooperative relationships. So there is a vortex of becoming, a vortex that contains all of the requests, all of the amended requests, each and every detail of each and every asking that has emanated from you. The law of attraction is responding to that. The vortex is literally drawing in all things necessary for the completion of every request it contains. All cooperative components are being summoned and are coming for the completion of these creations, for the answering of these questions, and for the solution to these problems. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? I needed to hear that. I needed to yeah. hear that. And so it's the, you know, create the intention and, and you put it out there and mm. you don't need to worry about what's the detail. Um, you just no. have to follow the trail, follow the, the little signs along the way, the little check marks, the little um, boxes that are like, yes, good, you're on, you're on. And trust that things are, you don't even know how they're working no. out in your favor. You, you couldn't even imagine how no. well that's going to no. happen. The, the universe conspires that's to right. make it happen. Yeah. You know, the universe says yes. It, it doesn't say no. We say no. The universe you says yes. the miracle. Right? And so once you're clear and you know exactly what you want, the universe will move literally heaven and earth to make it happen for you. Mm. But you, can, you can't have doubt and you can't take your eyes off that. You have to live as if it's already happening or already happened. Yes, um, yes. Because the minute you you stray from that, then the universe goes, oh. So you don't want so that. So you don't want that. Great. Okay, cool. okay great. So we're just going to wait for your next order. You know. Being so. intentional. Intention is, is just such a word to live by. Yes. So think to yourself in your home today, like, what do I intend? Not what do I want, what do mm -hmm. I intend? 
Yeah, for me, it was that taking control of your thoughts and, and, and knowing the universe says yes to whatever my thought is. Negative, positive, the universe doesn't know negative. So if, even if I'm having a negative thought, the universe says, yep, to that. And I'm like, wait, what? So you get evidence that you're right. Right, no matter <laughs> what you're thinking. So you know, you could be thinking, oh, I, I, I feel gross today. Yeah. The universe says yes. So that experience you will have the rest of that day, you've set that intention. And the universe will be like, okay, so she wants to experience gross today. Someone's going to so look at her Somebody's going to look at her weird. You're going to feel whatever. Yeah. Um, but if you change that, you're like, I, I feel beautiful today. Or I want to experience all the joy. Because joy is my word. Um, <laughs> the universe goes, yes. And so you find yourself, you know, living in joy. It's like, it's that, like it's that weird thing like, oh, you're thinking about getting a car. Yeah. And all of a sudden you see that type of car everywhere, everywhere. you know, um, or you're like, oh, I really oh, I just love red today. And all of a sudden you see red everywhere because that's where you're, you're, calling, you're it calling it in and your attention has gone there. So it's that, it's that, what do you want to experience? Focus on that and it's going to show up. It's going to show up. It has to show up. It's gonna, the, law of, the law of attraction says yes. And you should say yes. You should, I should say, say yes. You <laughs> should say yes to the dress or whatever. <laughs> I want to talk about the arts. Okay, so yes. Tracy is one of the most powerful healers through her voice that I have ever mm -hmm. experienced. Now, I don't know if you know this when you go to a show or not, like a concert, a play, mm -hmm. um, people, when they're in the zone and when they're not in the zone, you can tell when they're channeling and when they're not. Mm -hmm. Whether they know it or not, yeah. it's like this direct source comes down mm -hmm. and whoosh, through your right. heart out into the crowd. How is that experience for you, and, and do you, how do you get there? I, I feel like there's so much missing um, uh, in, in things I see sometimes where that energetic element isn't present, right? And it's essential. It's essential oh, it's to hugely the experience. essential. You have to. It's uh, again, it's all about intention. Yeah. You have to be clear. Like for me, when I'm singing in that moment, in the moment, I know I'm singing to be connected. I'm singing to be connected, and it's not. I don't sing from a place of, oh, love me, love me, love me. Because I don't, it's not about, if you're, those people that you see that aren't connected, they're doing it for the validation. That's right. They're doing it to get filled up from people going, yay, you're fantastic. You can sense you're it amazing. In my own way. Right. That's not where I go from. I, I come from a place of, I'm doing this from a vibrational point and from a source place and for I have something to share. Um, and by when I give, I receive That's right. in that. And so it's this amazing reciprocal, you know, it comes down from here, it goes out, and then I get it back, and I get it back. But it's not a validation thing. It's not a, it's not that. It's, oh, make me feel good by loving me. It's a, I'm gonna give you the most positive vibration I possibly can and watching that change then fills me back up. Can I interrupt you for a mm -hmm. second? So this is what I call the circle of light. And this is the concept that when what you love to do, what you intend to do is something that brings your heart mm -hmm. so much joy, is then received by yes. people who are made better by it. You, you're, you're helping the world in the best way you know how to. Yes. I mean, you're not gonna be the best lawyer in the world, certain people, you're gonna be the best singer in the world who will reach them as mm -hmm. an artist, touch their hearts, make their mm -hmm. experience better, and that energy comes right back. Yeah. It feeds you and it keeps giving you that fuel. And again, it's not a validation thing, no. it's an energetic exchange. It's a, yes, yeah. yes, that's exactly what it is. And it's the most amazing feeling. And so that's when, when you see those people and you're like, wow, they were lovely on stage, but I just didn't feel anything. I mean, they had a beautiful voice or they, they gave a nice performance, but I didn't really feel anything. Who moves you? Oh, that's hard. And you don't have to say me, <laughs> but you can. Go, you move me in so many ways. Thanks, Jess. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, gosh, um, one of my favorite performers is Kelly Clarkson. Yeah, she's so good. She's Super Channels connected all the time, all the time, because she don't care if you like her or not. Oh, she's, she's so not doing it for that. She is doing it for the experience of doing it. Um, and you can see that. You can see that in her and that voice that comes out. You're like, yes. So she, for me, is one of those that I just truly am like, oh. you know. Um, 
And I encourage you to watch when, when you um, go to shows or see things on TV, mm -hmm. who are those people who really connect you? I remember um, seeing Uzo Aduba from Orange is the New Black on stage before I was on Orange is the New Black, but um, I saw her at uh, Circle in the Square in Godspell, and she came on stage, planted herself, and this voice came out, and this energy was like, Phew! I was almost thrown back in mm -hmm. my seat mm -hmm. by the power of that connection and that yeah. intention. And those are the experiences I live for. I was weeping, weeping, and yeah. uh, once on this island, which was also at Circle and Square, um, those artists, there was something, you could almost see the, the, the energetic connection mm -hmm. to the source. And everyone else was like, yeah, and I was just, Right, just bawling, yeah. and so the, those are the gifts. That's why we mm -hmm. have art. Of course, it teaches you empathy, mm -hmm. but it's also to to be healed um, out of like the ordinary. Okay, I'm going to do the traditional channels of therapy or meditation, or which are all valid, which are all and necessary. Fantastic! Oh my this gosh, is another way. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. didn't know you were being healed, right? Mm -hmm. And you are. <laughs> Well, um, as we start to wrap this up, I want to hear um, more about the projects that you're working on, what you're excited about that's coming up, and how people can connect with you. Um, well, let's see. So, um, I'm in a new band that's really it's fun. So oh my gosh. It's called Not Rock, like K N O T Rock. Um, and it's uh, based on like the Yacht Rock Station off Pandora and uh, 70s and 80s soft rock. It's so fun. So much fun. It's What's your favorite so song to sing? Um, I get to sing You're No Good by Linda Ronstadt, okay. which is so much fun. And I Love might be it. doing a little heart, you know, I, which yeah. is mm, perfect. So fun. One. Yeah, right? Um, so that's coming up. Um, I'm also doing a funk soul show um, on the 28th of June uh, down at the Clock Tower, which is really fun. Great. Get to hear yeah. me do some, you know, soul stuff. For all you really demo fun. people. Right? Do you have a website with all these dates? Um, actually, if you go to my Facebook page, um, Tracy Kern, T R A C I Kern, um, I post all of that stuff on there. Um, but Not Rock has its own Facebook page, so you can check that out. And then the Clock Tower has its own, you know, with with the calendar on that. Um, and yeah. voice lessons. If and you voice lessons. Like yeah, Tracy sing. Kern Voice Studio on on um, Facebook is how you can connect with me there. Yeah, I teach a full time voice teacher, which is such an amazing. I love my job. I love watching people find their voice, find what they didn't know was inside of them. And it's literally watching their insides come out. And oh, um, I love that you said that because I realized like that's one of the top things that move me in the world. It's those moment in the, that moment in the movie where they finally sing flat. I think about like um, Sister Mary Robert uh -huh. and Sister Act, Sister for Act. example. Yep. Like when they finally like, ha ah, ha, and mm -hmm. their soul comes out yes. to me. Yes. That is, that's the stuff right well, there. Well, it's the, it's the purest of you. You know, it's not something outside of you. It's it's the purest of your inside mm -hmm. coming out. And so it's glorious. I love my job. I love, you know, I tell people, I'm like, there's two facets to me. There's the, the performer who loves to be on stage and who loves to, to do that. I get fed that way, but I also get fed teaching and yeah. watching people grow and helping them, helping them see what they had no idea was inside of them. Um, it's the circle of light. <laughs> That it is. No, it is. That's what it, it really is. is. So, um, so yeah, that's that's uh, that's it. <laughs> well, you guys, I'm so glad you get to know uh, Tracy Kern a little bit better today, and hopefully, you'll stay in contact with her because she's like a rocket ship. It's just one amazing thing after another, and I can't wait to see what else you're gonna do, girl. Yay, girl. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Love you. Love you. <laughs> Bye.